G'day guys, welcome back. This is going to be my WinJupos tutorial. Um, I've got a few different um, images here today. We're going to do Jupiter, we have a quick muck around with Saturn. And I'm going to throw um, Venus and uh, Mars up on the uh, image just so you can have a quick look. We won't be derotating anything there. Um, as you can see, I've had a bit of a muck around, but we will go um, we'll redo these. Uh, I just wanted to make sure this wasn't going to be another 40 minute video. And um, as always, guys, don't listen to this in the car. It'll put you to sleep and you'll crash. 100% guaranteed. Um, here we go. Up the top. This is going to be a nice quick one. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm going to quickly just run through it and show you the things that I use on here. And it's only very, very few items. So we've got the image measurement bar down here. Um, and derotation of images. This will be the one you use if you um, derotate with color images. Derotation of RGB frames. So if you're a mono um, camera user, you'll be using this one down here. Or if you like to pull apart your images and and um, even the color frames, you can muck around with them and put them back together. Um, right, let's start at the top. So Sun, Mercury, Venus, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Um, WinJupos is a very powerful tool. It has lots and lots of different things we can do. We can do maps with it, um, uh, imaging. It can show you um, moon transits, shadows, you name it. It, it. it can do it. You've just got to really dig deep with it and, and have a look through it. It'll take you a while to master, but as I just said before, we really only need image measurement and derotation of images. Derotation of video streams, it's opening a can of worms. Don't worry about that. Use Auto Stack at 3. I've got, uh, if you, you're unfamiliar with Auto Stack at 3, I've actually got a video I did a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty basic. Just have a quick look through there. Much easier than mucking around with uh, derotation of video stream. So just run that through Auto Stack at 3, bring it over here, and you can even derotate a single image if it's gone over the uh, widely accepted, like two or three minute. Um, uh, captures for the big gas giants they don't like they rotate that fast at um, uh, three minutes is absolute tops and the biggest scope you use you, you should be bringing that down to two minutes and, and below um, all right guys celestial body we're going to start with jupiter language i'm on english design standards just white very bright dark is the color you're looking at black is black preferences have not touched any of that and um, and yeah, don't even worry about it. it just complicates things. Um, as always, I'll just mention again, guys. It's a free piece of software. Please be generous. Give what you can. They um, they make it widely available for us to use, and we get superb images because this software is here. It definitely improves everybody's images if you know how to use them. All right, guys. Start image measurement now this is a, um, a, a capture I did this is from the 27th and I just quickly put that there to um, to take uh, the frame I, I had a different frame up there but when I came back as you know I've, I've tested these and had a bit of a muck around when I came back um, the wire frame just came up exactly over the spot. So that's not going to help you guys understand how to locate and use um, the wire frame. So here we go. So we're going to go open image. This is our folder that we're playing with, WinJupos tutorial. We're going to pick this one first. So as you can see, it sort of looks a bit funny and blotchy. We've got Europa. Io and Callisto and then you've got as you can see it prepares the moons as well and the same with Saturn and this these are very important they can help us align it perfectly and give us size 
um, and dimensions, always try and include a wide field um, shot of your planets or just try and capture a moon or something like that in your first or in the middle, in the middle of your images, whatever you like, but load this one, your wide field up first and it will give you the orientation and the spacing and the size because if you look here now, I'm going to go to adjustments after I just circle this bit here. Guys, make sure you put your longitude and latitude in. Use um, Google Earth. Uh, there's lots of um, websites around that you can use to find your location. They're all different. So on one, it's this particular location here will be completely different. Like uh, they're within a couple of k's of each other. So that's all you really need. It's it's not really that precise. If you yeah. um, anyway, make sure your plus and minus is used correctly because it will put you on the other side of the world if you use them incorrectly. So this is this is roughly this is uh, Newcastle in New South Wales in Australia, just above Sydney, um, yeah, and um, it it will give all the planets the correct orientation of um, what we see from down here, and will help derotate them. All right, I come over to adjustments. Um, zoom, you can make it bigger, make it smaller. We just want to contain everything in there that we've got. Um, rotation, don't use this. I'll show you the um, the keys in a second. Gamma, you can brighten everything up. I'll show you on the satin image um, that it really helps with the gamma. For some reason, the, the Jupiter images have these dark things around it. It, was, it only happened after I changed it to the dark mode. Uh, normally, all of the... The image will be exactly the same as the inner box there. All this black stuff was different before, so I might even uninstall and reinstall it, see how it goes. Um, gamma, contrast, don't touch any of them. Brightness, oh, there we go, what happened there? Well, there you go, solved. Right, uh, we'll leave brightness on zero. Oh, no, we won't. It won't let me do that either. Leave it on two. LD compensation. This is um, important when you're framing. And the LD value is very important when you're derotating. We need to make this um, lower than one. I'll show you when we get to the actual uh, derotation section. This number here is limb darkening and it is one of the reasons why you have very sharp edges around your planet. If you see some images and it's got a sharp line on down the each edge, it's usually because the limb uh, darkening value has not been changed because oh, the, um, the, the planet is very bright and it's just that Remember I spoke about when you're sharpening your images before bringing them over here. If you have something sharp on sharp on sharp, it creates a, um, a, a very, it's just easy to see. I'll try and find one for you and we'll, um, we'll look in there. Anyway, I'll, we'll run through this. Um, additional graphic without additional graphic. With additional graphic. Grid. Don't need these, guys. Additional graphic, that's all I use. Okay, doke. Position, I don't play with. Miscellaneous, um, I've started uh, sending images to uh, the Juno um, guys at NASA and they, they will use them um, to identify features. Um, that they can target with the Juno mission. Um, so it's just another little thing. Mostly, oh, I don't worry about all the other tabs. Um, and today we won't be worrying about that either. All right, so 
don't forget put in your longitude and latitude otherwise it won't work and you'll think it's broken adjustments let's start with the keys you can only move the frame when you're in the adjustments tab all right okay so the arrow keys up down left right get it roughly into position right uh, next set of keys page up page down all right so actually that's that's quite close I'm just moving up and down, trying to get the gap around here just central at the moment. What do we got there? I think, and the third set of keys. So we've got the arrow keys for moving your frame around. Page up and page down for size. And P. And N for rotation. So N will rotate it clockwise, and P will rotate it any clockwise. And hopefully, without the massive comp compression YouTube and what we lose here with it's a screen capture software, you will be able to see when I click on this that that is fairly close. And that's that's close enough. We might just turn the brightness up and just try and show you. You can even see Callisto at the top is on the money as well. Now that shows us that the orientation is um, is spot on. Right, uh, back to image. Save. Uh, it'll save over the, it'll read over the top of one of these five point it'll ask us to overwrite that one yep so we're going to do that next image we did that one we're going to do this one and as you can see I'll try and make this smaller so what one have we got here now it'll blink but when I select, when we go back to this one, watch the moons move. See the moons that the wiring moved, the wire frame moved. And then the planet followed because it opened the second frame. All right, so if you've got it lined up well, as you can see, go back to adjustment, frame on off they're still spot on so the size if if you change the size one two three four five you change the size see how they're they're spreading wider apart as well as further away one two three four five all right so we've got it right so remember guys if you can always capture yourself a, a wide field uh, version or capture some moons two is beautiful one anything anything that will allow you to orientate the the, um, the frame and the distance because if you look around the edges here there's still black around there and if those moons weren't there there's no guarantee that I could line it up correctly either so it's always um, a bit more difficult so okay doc, let's get it stuck into this because we're already 14 minutes in. <laughs> All right, we're going to go and it's going to ask overwrite. Yes. Open the next one. Now, this is our first one without the moon. See here, wireframe has moved away, but we know it's the exact size. And we also know that it's the exact orientation. So basically, all we're going to do is cover it to make sure that it looked like it did before. So there'll be a small area of 
blackness around the edges. That looks pretty good. And there's also this LD compensation tab up here. See how everything's nice and smooth, but that can be tricky. The moon, um, the use of the moons will be spot on. Even with the LD compensation, if I go left a few, like if I go left, that's already one more than it was. So that's actually out of whack a little bit. But you can see when I come back. So it's it's it helps. It definitely helps the LD compensation, but it's it's not as good as the moons. So we know that's right. Back, save. Yep. Okay. Same again. We know that's spot on. We're just going to save. Yep. Open. And that's in there as well. Overwrite. So we'll come over here. We'll do all of these. I'll do this now. Derotation of images. They are all in there. We'll remove all. They're the old ones. Righto. And control. Drag and drop. We'll open them. Righto guys, this is what we spoke about before. LD value. If you were to derotate five images and have that LD value one, well, let's let's just overdo it. Just to show what will happen. See this edge here? Now that was obviously something that I generated on my own because that's the edge of some of the captures. Right now it, nobody would upload an image like this but sometimes you will see edges on the planets and that's all because of LD value. All right you need to have a look at your own images. Each one will be different. If I set it 75 that's that's going to help us. It's definitely going to be something reasonable. We'll overwrite that and see our outside here. So I could probably do 80 or 85 on this particular set. There's only five um, images, but uh, that looks quite good. So what we'll do just quickly, just so you can understand, let's get Registax up. Let's find that one. Um, that's it there. Alright, so this is the one we've just derotated. And as you can see, um, and apologies guys for using what is clearly a, a pretty nice image. Disregard the image as far as, because um, if you've got like an 8 inch scope or a 6 inch scope, you, you're never going to be able to generate the kind of detail that a 16 inch dob generates. And apologies for that, but just just focus on the the process. Don't worry about the results because you will get there. You will get there. So if you look at the the detail here now, if we were to put this one in here, and that's still reasonable, but you can see. We'll just put that there like that. And it's it's way over sharpened and everything. But when we drop this one in here, the way that it reacts is far different than the fine adjustments. After you've derotated a couple of frames on an image, you, you only need much finer adjustments than you would normally, normally need. Um, Get this, bring this over here. You can see the blues a little bit down. Yeah, we'll we'll worry about we won't worry about this right now. Anyway, so that's um, one capture of G 
Jupiter, done and dusted. All right, so just if, you, if you're unsure or I went too fast, just, just pop back again, have a look back through and um, go again. We'll move on to Saturn, same thing. Come up here, Saturn, recording, image measurement. Nope, yep. Open. Is that in our? Yes, it is. All right, same thing again, guys. These are all being lightly sharpened. That is a result. We'll delete that. Um, this has been lightly sharpened. W on there. We'll open this one. All right, so it's very close. Back over here. We'll make it smaller. There's our wire frame up there in the bushes. Anyway, let's bring it down. Now, as you can see here, these have got Saturn's moons on it as well. Now, if I use the brightness, we should be Saturn is, is far more difficult, but it is still able to do it. And one thing you can do, you can heavily, heavily sharpen your Saturn image and bump up the, the contrast and, and um, everything in Wind Jupos. You can see over here, that's that moon there. But it will help you locate um, the planet in the correct orientation again. For the final touches, I will zoom back in. You can see that one's there. That one's there. Actually, I don't. I'm not sure whether you can see it, guys. Uh, this set satin image hasn't been posted yet, so um, we'll come. But it will go up probably maybe a day after this tutorial all right we've zoomed in a bit let's have another look I'm not sure whether you guys can see anyway let's get rid of that same thing left arrows up down Apply a bit of zoom, it will help you find the sweet spot. Same thing guys, don't be scared of this draw outline frame button because it will help you locate it and you don't want you don't want it to ride on your edges. That looks like it's a little bit low to me, so we'll bump it back up a bit higher. It looks like it's okay. Same thing again. Okay, so we'll come down here and we'll save this. It's going to tell us we're overriding. It's no problem. The sharpened version will come back. And we've lost the frame again, but it will be the correct orientation. This helps out massively when it comes time to relocating the, the wire frame. Take forever. go um, we'll just have a bit more of a look 
That's pretty good, I think. No, no I think we can do better. That's it there. Save. Oop. Open image. Last one down here. Adjustment. That looks pretty good. Get rid of that. Okay, we'll save this one as well. Let's just have a quick look over here. 21. Which one is the newest one? Righto. That's the newest one. This one is the oldest one. So you need to go. Alrighty. We'll finish that. Bring it back. Tools. Derotation. Move all. Put the new ones in. LD value. Doesn't matter so much on satin although you will get you do get artifacts around this limb of the planet here and the ring system so we'll just run this one through as you can see that looks reasonable let's get register stacks up that's it there and it's just already applied the, the sharpening that it had for the Jupiter image see down here so the alignment may not have been super but um, we'll go back and have another look at it later it's just a quick one here now alrighty we'll get rid of you get rid of you you gone all right we'll go to the venus image recording image measurement um what was that that must have been a blue um i think it was my blue optolon filter open image no we're gonna go desktop Jupiter's. okay same thing adjustment n that's a little bit small i think you know that's it same size maybe i can put them together Alrighty. so as you can see it shows the phase and that's how you align that one. Let's go to the Mars image. Open again. And here is The last one, as you can see, the outline has lots of detail on it. And when it's a decent capture, all my other Mars captures are six arc seconds. This one's about eight and a half or something like that. But you can see in there, rotate.
think that's about it. Anyway, when you do your imaging, you should be able to see, and as always, without the graphic, you probably get a better idea. This one I should sharpen it a lot more before putting it here, being it was so windy. And actually that's probably... That'll be about it there. That's that for Mars. Let me do rotation of RGB frames. No, we're not going to do Mars. Jupiter. Let's go back. Let's, let's clear. Let's remove that. Let's remove that. Let's remove that. Alrighty, so these are this is the same image we were just looking at. This is the red channel. I've split it up in um, GIMP. This is the green channel. And this is the blue channel. So what we're going to do, some people like um, splitting the channels and then processing each channel because they will all take different amounts of sharpening. Um, I don't really do that at this stage, but um, as you can see, blue, green, red, they definitely all have different amounts of and different characteristics that go together different amounts of detail the red is far more detailed in this particular application than the green and then you can see the blue hurts a bit more so anyway let's go again we'll get these we know they're the right ones um was asking for red let's open red Go to green, go to blue, thousand pixels, LD values down around 80. Don't never forget, or well, if you, you do notice that um, your images have, have uh, a bit sharp on the edges, this is usually what it is. All right, compile. And there is our RGB image of Jupiter and um, I think this is probably be posted by now so um, you might be able to see um, it's actually not bad not a bad capture all right guys thank you very much as always leave some comments follow me, find me on Twitter and um, let me know what else you want to have a look at or um, um, fine, have a look at my other videos, the Registax and AutoStack at 3, and at some stage I might even do uh, one with the um, entire process in one run, and then even get um, a lot of people use phones, I used to do phone work before, so I'll use PIP and then run right through and um, do an entire process. Um, Alright guys, clear skies, all the best, bye for now.